Every year when you get to Black Monday, which is what we talk about when the axe gets dropped on NFL head coaches and NFL general managers, there's always one or two surprises. I don't think you look at what happened with the Bears and are all that surprised, other than maybe that, oh, they actually did fire Ryan Pace. You know, we knew Matt Nagy was gone for a long time. Should have been gone last year. Like, if you couldn't see this coming, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Like, you could obviously see that coming. You could see the Vic Fangio firing coming in Denver. And whether that's fair or not is a different conversation, but the reality is he was going to go. Like, it is what it is. Bigger surprise, perhaps, that Joe Judge is still somehow, some way employed as an NFL head coach? Oh, yeah. Especially when you're running fucking goal line package quarterback sneaks on third and nine from inside of your own 10-yard line in the first half of a game. You've basically given up. You've shown that you don't know what the fuck you're doing, but somehow, some way, Giants ownership seems determined to give him a third year. They just can't admit that they fucking got it wrong. They can't admit that Dave Gettleman got it wrong. They let Dave Gettleman retire instead of just firing his ass. Because that's a personification of the Giants organization. So maybe it's a surprise that Joe Judge is still there. Maybe it's not. Depends on your perspective. But I think beyond question, the most surprising firing of this Black Monday head coaching circuit is that after three seasons, Brian Flores is out as head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And instantly, once this news dropped, it was shocking. It surprised people. I don't know why. But a lot of people were caught off guard. And I've already seen people talking about, you know, like, he'll be a very hot commodity on the market. You know, he won't have to wait long. Maybe he'll even get hired in this coaching cycle. If not, he'll probably only have to wait another year or two before he gets another opportunity. And I will say this, that he probably gets a head coaching opportunity again in the NFL sooner rather than later. I don't know if it comes in 2022. It may come in 2023, but he certainly will be a name to keep an eye on in the future because you could make an argument that he got kind of hosed here. But to those that are trying to make this out, as any number of other things, other than the fact that Brian Flores, at the end of the day, wasn't good enough at his job, need to stop themselves. You're going to hear those that are talking about, well, Joe Judge is fucking staying, but Brian Flores got fired and tried to make it some th type of dynamic about that being race. Well, yes, you could make an argument historically that black head coaches haven't gotten the same, you know, kind of leeway. They haven't gotten the same length of time. And I certainly have to go back to Ray Rhodes getting one season as a head coach for a team and so on and so forth. Like Steve Wilkes recently got one year in Arizona. But Steve Wilkes was really, really bad at his job. And there have been other head coaches like with Cleveland and Jacksonville, white guys, pasty faces that only got one year. So we need to stop that shit. Especially when you also look at the general manager, Chris Greer, is also black himself for the Miami Dolphins. So if we're going to go with that dynamic, like it just doesn't really work. What you have to look at, though, is that Brian Flores deserved to go because after three years, the Dolphins didn't make the playoffs. More importantly, you could say, well, 2019, they were trying to tank and he won more games. Well, if anything, he fucked up the tank and fucked up the chance at Joe Burrow. Right? I mean, the Dolphins were supposed to be the worst team in the league that year. Well, they end up like fifth? Yeah, number five pick? Just saying. And it's not just about that. It's the fact that when you look at last year, once this team drafted Tua, he had to be on board with that, whether that was his guy or not. And you could always tell from day fucking one that he was never fully sold on Tua. He never fully bought into Tua. And by the way, I can't fucking blame him. He was right. Because it's a decision that organization is going to regret potentially for the next 15 years. Is they took an inferior physical product, talking about Tua and his physical skills, and passed on Justin Herbert. That's just dumb. They took the wrong quarterback. Period. But once that's happened, that's happened. And you have to do everything you can to develop him. And you have to do everything you can to help him. You have to put him in a position to succeed. And Brian Flores over the past two years consistently fucking didn't. 
like not customizing their play calling for what he did best, the lack of ability of him and his coaching staff to coach up that offensive line. This is an organization that's invested quite a bit in the offensive line in terms of draft pick currency, and so many of these young offensive linemen are fucking terrible. At some point in time, you can point to the front office and, oh, we'll get there in a moment and say they are fucking dog shit. But the bottom line is, is that once you got these guys, you invested high picks in them, quality coaching staffs will be able to figure out how to get more out of these guys, and they just didn't. And then the constant sabotaging of Tua in 2020, like you didn't start him off to start the year because of recovery from the hip injury, whatever. But once you go three and three, then you say, we're going to go away from Fitzmagic, and you're going to go to Tua. But once you do that, you have to stick with him. But Brian Flores being the dumb dick, decided that he was going to keep yanking to it to put in Fitzpatrick because he was trying to win games because he wanted to chase a meaningless fucking wild card spot that, guess what, ding dong, dumb dick, you ultimately didn't get. So he undercuts his young quarterback's rookie season of development for no playoff appearance. Oh, that was a good one. He frankly should have been fired after that. But he was allowed to come back, understandably so, for 2021. And you can even see at different points in the season. Tua's not enough healthy enough to start, but he's healthy enough to be active. But then you'll go to him. But then you'll, at rain of ties, play Jacoby Brissett. No. He kept fucking up Tua's development. And like I said, Tua is not great. And to those Miami fans that want to hold out hope, and especially those Alabama fans that are also Miami fans that want to pretend like Tua's great and make every fucking goddamn excuse under the sun. I'm not saying Tua's terrible. He is not. He's been put in a bad situation Bad leadership from the coaching staff, from Brian Flores, and obviously a terrible general manager in Chris Greer. But he's not great. And you need to get over that. The Miami Dolphins could have taken Justin Herbert. They fucked up. And they're going to regret that decision for years. And then they doubled down on that decision by not taking Trey Lance the next year, passing on other quarterbacks. Like This is going to be a decision that potentially haunts this organization for years. But Brian Flores... And you want to talk about, well, look at how he had them rebound and go on that like seven game winning streak. Look at how they got in that fucking position to begin with. Like this team was terrible. What were they? One and seven, one and eight, some bullshit like that. One and seven, wasn't it? Something like that. Wouldn't need to rattle off a seven game win streak if you freaking handled your business more during the regular season. And never mind the fact that when you look at that Dolphins big long win streak, it was a bunch of, against a bunch of garbage ass teams. And the Ravens on a Thursday night. You know, like getting to face the Saints when they've got Ian Book, sorry ass, starting at quarterback for him. I mean, come on. Three straight years, no playoffs. You got to go. You just do. Could the Dolphins potentially regret this? Yes. But it was absolutely in a bubble the right decision to fire Brian Flores. His team did not win enough. And he fucking mangled the handling of the young quarterback into a talk of Iowa the past two years. I don't know how you can't see that. He had to go. But the bigger problem to me is, how in the hell does Brian Flores have the hammer drop on him? But somehow Chris Greer is still allowed that sorry sack of shit to be the general manager of the Miami Dolphins. How? Six years. Here's what he's done in six years. He hired Adam Gase. Let me repeat that. He hired Adam Gase. That in and of itself should be a fireable offense for a general manager. But instead, after three years, he sent Adam Gase packet. And back then, that first year he brought in Adam Gase, you remember, that was the year J.J. He had the multiple 200-yard rushing games and the Dolphins went to the playoffs, blah, 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 blah. I ain't been back since. Six years. Hired Adam Gase. Three years later, fired Adam Gase. Hired Brian Flores. Three years later, no playoff wins. No additional playoff appearances. Fires Brian Flores. Is the same dumb dick. Same dumb dick that drafted Tua Tagovailoa over Justin Herbert. Then didn't do nearly a good enough job to build around him and support him. And yet somehow owner Stephen Ross is giving fucking Chris Greer the opportunity to hire a third head coach. Holy shit.
It's black Ryan Pace. That's exactly what the fuck we're talking about here. Except even Ryan Pace in Chicago, even goofy George Metaskey and Bean Count Ted didn't sit there and give Ryan Pace the opportunity to hire a third head coach, but somehow Chris Greer does. One playoff appearance in six years, and this asshole gets to fire Brian Flores, and he's not sent fucking packing? Does he like to take it up the ass from Stephen Ross? Does he give it up the ass to Stephen Ross? Does he have fucking pictures of Stephen Ross or somebody in the Ross family in a compromised position? Like, what is it? And there certainly can't be any football logic. The whole thing of, well, the dynamic of Brian Flores and Chris Greer, they didn't get along together well. Well, you know what? That's fine. You fire Brian Flores. That's still the right call. You fire your sorry sack of shit general manager, too. And I, I say this the same thing I said about the Chicago Bears if you're a high-profile head coach. The fuck would you want anything to do with the Miami Dolphins and Chris Greer? Why? I mean, Chris Greer is a fucking clown show. Losing record in six seasons as general manager. Tried to tank in 2019. Couldn't even execute that right. Then when he got into position to potentially get a franchise-changing generational quarterback, fault him at pick five, he took Tua Tagovailoa instead. All right? Could have rectified that mistake this year by potentially taking a Trey Lance or Justin Fields or maybe a Mac Jones, like any number of things, and admitted his mistake, but he doubled down and traded out of those spots, and the organization will also regret that. Drafted a number of busts. When you look at some of their first-round picks of recent years, it is not good. Again, I ask you, how is Chris Greer still an NFL general manager? There is no football justification or rationale. Like for all the people expressing shock and outrage over Brian Flores getting fired, I get it to some degree, but at the end of the day, he wasn't good enough at his job. To those like Bears fans that are saying, I want Brian Flores, what the fuck is wrong with you? He mangled fucking Tua. You want him to mangle Justin Fields as well? Fuck's wrong with you. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. Because whether he was on board with Tua or not, it doesn't matter. Once you have Tua, you have to do everything you can to put him in a position to succeed. And nobody can watch this Dolphins team over the past two years and say with a straight face in any way, shape, or form that Brian Flores did that. He just didn't. But even more so, Chris Greer fucking didn't. And yet somehow, someway, Chris Greer, defying all logic and rationale, still has a damn job as a general manager in the National Football League. That's fucking ridiculous. Unacceptable. And if you're a Dolphins fan, well, you're in Miami, you largely don't care. Except for the fact that as a sports city, the one team you do actually kind of sort of care about is the Miami Dolphins. Like, you should be raging about this. You should be outraged about this because this is bullshit. If the head coach who failed has to go, so does the general manager who hired the head coach that had to go, who also hired the last head coach that had to go. When you talk about no playoff wins in his six seasons, again, it's the Miami Bears. What's so different between Chris Greer and Ryan Pace? Tell me. Chris Greer couldn't wait to run Tannehill the fuck out of town. And then when he finally got in position to get his quarterback, he took the wrong fucking one. And clearly hired a head coach that was more concerned with trying to win 9 or 10 games to slide into the playoffs than being aligned with the long-term vision. And when you do shit like that, you should be sent fucking packing too. And the fact that Ross hasn't fired Chris Greer, tells you all you need to know about the shit show that is the Miami Dolphins organization.